from Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right on our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Thank you so much for being part of the program. I'm still getting email from a show we did right. <laughs> I gave out the eight words to save your marriage, ladies. I gave out the eight. It was eight simple words. The eight words were, remember this, how you ladies can, can save your relationship, save your marriage. Eight words. The eight words were long hair, stay thin, sex anytime, and shut up. Latinos, you shut up! It was that simple. And yet people are still writing in and droves, droves with their opinions about that. You know what? Just get over it, ladies. Get over it. Seriously. Yeah, I think it's the phrase, shut up, that gets these women. I, I, I think that when a man says shut up, it's a problem. Women love to say shut up. Latinos, you shut up! But men, on the other hand, you know, it's like politically incorrect. You're not supposed to tell a woman to shut up. You're not supposed to do that. That's wrong. That's... Oh my goodness, that's, that's being controlling. It's, it's domestic violence, for God's sake, to tell a woman to shut up. But when a woman says shut up, it's perfectly okay. Latinos, you shut up! Perfectly okay. I don't understand. So, um, anyway, keep those cards and letters coming, folks. Is anybody sending cards and letters anymore? <laughs> Who was that? Dean Martin used to say that? I think it was Dean Martin on the Dean Martin show. I'm trying. Anyway, thank you very much for being part of the program. We appreciate it. And look at this. What's your topic tonight, and, anyway? All right. Keep your pants on, lady. We'll uh, get to it. Jesus. Every once in a while, we, uh, we dip into this guy, uh, Evan Mark Katz. Uh, don't you love those people with the middle name? Is this guy an assassin or something? Why is he using his middle name? Huh? Because he doesn't like being called Evan. He wants to be called Mark. Is that it? Jesus. And he calls himself a dating coach. How desperate are you that you need a dating coach? Let's review. If you're hot, you don't need a dating coach. If you're a woman and you're hot... <laughs> Guys are asking out on dates all the time. So the only women who would need a dating coach are fat or fugly or both. Or old. <laughs> like those chicks on Sex of the City. Old. And men, come on, you need a dating coach? Hire a hooker. For Christ's sake, get something for your money. But this guy, Evan Mark Katz... Answers questions about dating on the internet. And uh, this particular letter appeared in uh, something called AmericanChronicle.com. And here it is. This is from a, a reader named Steffi. Steffi with an eye. <laughs> Probably with a little heart over the eye. I'm sure Steffi... Uh, Steffi believes in love. So she writes to a dating coach for advice. Dear Evan. So. <laughs> first word of the letter. So. 
Can you imagine if people like this wrote the Declaration of Independence? So, so we hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> that all men are, you know, created equal. Okay? That they're, uh, how do I say this? Endowed by their uh, creator, for lack of a better term, uh, with certain inalienable rights. No, no, if it was Steffi, she wouldn't know the word inalienable. <laughs> Dear Evan, <laughs> so I met this great guy online. <laughs> Is that even possible? <laughs> I met this great guy online. We've been exclusive nearly from the start. And we really like each other. However, he's moving really fast. He said, I love you on the fifth date. I just had a deer-in-the-headlights look on my face. He said repeatedly that he will take this at my pace. He's a pussy again. But he's made it clear that he's found, quote, the one. And that's me. Wow, all this is great. It's a little frightening. Are these red flags... He's been divorced and dating for about six years, so he's been there and done just about all of that. I've only been divorced and dating for about a year and a half, and I'm still finding my way through life as an independent person. He says, and he's proven in subtle ways, that he's willing to give me whatever space I need, that he loves me, and that's it for him. Is this normal? I've never experienced this kind of strong emotion from a man before. Was I just with the wrong guys if they were more apathetic? If I was more apathetic? I am falling in love with him at my own pace. But I'm just wondering if my dating radar isn't picking up on something here. Help me figure out if I'm missing something here or do I have a really great guy? Signed, Steffi. And Evan Mark Katz writes this long, rather windy response. So let me just save you the time of listening to that and just listen to me for a second here. After all, it's my show. <laughs> First of all, guys should avoid saying I love you for as long as possible. Uh, what is wrong with a guy who says, I love you on the fifth date? This is a guy who, he may tell you he's been dating and doing everything. He's probably doing absolutely nothing. He probably isn't dating any hot chicks. He probably isn't getting any action. He probably hasn't had a relationship in all the years since he's had a divorce. And he's probably found somebody who is vulnerable and looking for love like you, Steffi. I don't understand people like this. I don't understand the I love you people. Especially the I love you in five dates people. Or the I, by the way, we've done shows and we've gotten calls from people who have proposed marriage on a first date. I've gotten calls on this program from people who said I love you on, people who said I love you before the first date. People who say I love you. <laughs> especially men who say I love you in just a few dates, there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with them. You can't know if you love somebody in five dates. In fact, frankly, I don't think you can know it in 50 dates. Saying I love you is something that you should avoid as long as you possibly can. You know what? Even if you're starting to feel it, stop feeling it. Don't talk about it. Shut your mouth. You're giving away the store. You're giving away all your power by saying, I love you. You know what? If you love somebody, take as long as you can to tell them so. You must wait as long as you can in order to get the best possible deal. 
She has to feel that she roped you in. She has to feel that she really had to work to get you, that she had to change you. The minute you make it easy by saying, I love you, you're screwed. Are you this kind of person? Do you fall in love easily? Do you start announcing your feelings to people early on? Do you ever find yourself saying, I love you, and then wishing you could take it back, but it's too late, you already said it? Have you been a victim of somebody who says, I love you? Like, right out of the gate? I've got to know. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're alone, you wake up, you've got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing, what she wants to do. It's the Tom Likas Show. Right! Okay, women say shut up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Are you one of those people who says, I love you, like right out of the chute? <laughs> you're so stupid. It has to be said, you're stupid. It's Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. What's up? Uh, my paycheck, last I looked, Sarah. Nice. Wish I was as lucky as you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what happened. Um, a couple years ago, I was I had a couple dates with a guy. It had been about two weeks, and he was a virgin. And I ended up taking his virginity, and he told me he loved me right after. And I said I was sorry that I didn't feel the same, and he actually cried. So. Didn't I warn you and the other listeners to this show never to have sex with a virgin? Didn't I warn you about that? I've actually never heard that. I guess I haven't listened to you long enough. You can't get rid of a virgin. They stick to you like glue. They're like human lint. Well, I was able to get rid of him after about two months, and he won't talk to me. I tried to be his friend. That's what you want. Oh, stop with trying to be a friend. I tried to be a friend just means you don't have the balls to tell the truth. Which The truth is you just wanted to, to, to knock it out with a virgin, and then you wanted to move on your merry way, and you couldn't get rid of him. And you had no idea how to do it. Well, I just tried to be his friend. You, you don't want to be his friend. You want him to go away. Now you have what you want. Say it. I have what I want. I, I have what I want. It's true. I, I don't want to be his friend. I, wa I wanted to take his virginity and disappear like a man would do to a woman. Say it. Okay, I did. I, I admit it. I tried to be his friend. Look, you can lie to him, and you can lie to your, to your friends, your mom. Don't lie to me. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I tried to be his friend. <laughs> Remember when I took your virginity? Now we're just pals. And you want to know something, pal? Nothing's ever going to happen with you. <laughs> ever. In fact, I'm going to be such a friend to you, I want to tell you about my new boyfriend. And since you're my friend, I wanted you to be the first to know. That's a great friendship when women offer to be your friend after things don't work out. Isn't that nice? Because most women don't have the balls to say, you know what? <laughs> you didn't get it done in the sack. Or, I made a big mistake. They'll never say that. So instead they go, oh, I, you know, we have such a great friendship. Why, why, we don't want to lose that, do we? Why would, why would you lose that? I'll tell you what. You have sex with me, I'm going to be a really good friend to you. <laughs> I'm going to care what happens to you. I'm going to listen to you blah, blah, blah all the time, even when I don't want to. If you wanted to be my friend, you'd give me uh, some vagina. You're handing that over. <laughs> Can't we just be friends? By the way, who told Nia Lee to sit sideways on Channel 9? She's sitting sideways all the time now. <laughs> just an aside. <laughs> don't think we don't notice these things. <sighs> 
I caught out of the corner of my eye. We have the Channel 9 News on in the studio, and there's Mia Lee sitting sideways. I know what they're doing. Jackie Johnson's going to be reporting on that East Coast weather front that's coming in. She'll be leaning over with the pointer. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Are you one of those people? Are you one of those people who says, I love you, like right out of the gate? Jesus. Joe on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be on your show. Uh, I just it is. A situation. I've been with my girlfriend for two months. I'm an 18 year old high school student. I got her pregnant. She said, I love you, and I, got, I felt obligated to say it back. Why did you get her pregnant? Let's start with that. Um, we got like caught up in the moment. I don't want to say caught up in the moment. No, but no, no. You were just stupid. True. Say it. I was just stupid. I was stupid. I I thought about it in my head, but I thought, what well, are the chances? I might lose my opportunity to have sex if I said, you know what? I didn't bring any condoms. How about tomorrow? I don't know. I was just wondering what advice you could give me now. Oh, now you ask me for advice. Did you take my advice when I said always use condoms? No, I didn't. Did I did you take not. my advice when I said don't say I love you, don't be falling in love, don't be don't be telling women they're your girlfriend? Did, did you follow that advice? No, I didn't. All right, so what you want me to do is you went, it, it reminds me of the sign I used to see at a gas station in Selden, New York, you know, where my parents used to live. There was a sign at the gas station that said, we fix bad brake jobs. You see? And that's what you've got here. You've got a bad brake job. Instead of taking my advice on what to do, you did it your own way. You thought you knew more than I did, didn't you? I wouldn't say that. Oh, yeah. No, just, no, you I, did. I'm stupid. Yeah, but you also thought you knew more than I did because I gave you the information you needed. Before you did this, you knew that you were not supposed to have sex without a condom, right? Right. And before you did this, you knew you were not supposed to say, I love you to women. That's true. Right. But you did it anyway. So it goes beyond being stupid. I gave you the tools you needed. And you said to yourself, you know what? What does he know? And now you're getting the big payback. Do you know more than I do? No, not at all. No, you don't. So now is she having that baby? Yeah, she's she's a big Jesus freak. She's like full Catholic. Why are you having sex with Jesus freaks? I don't know. By the way, what what does the Pope say about fornication? Is he uh, now in favor of that? I, I don't know. I, I'm not I thought, religious I thought that was only between priests and altar boys. I didn't think that was allowed between heterosexuals in the Catholic Church. Is it? I don't know. But you knew she was a Jesus freak before you had sex with her. Right. And you did it without a condom anyway. I did. What did you think was going to happen? If you had sex with a religious individual without a condom. She'd get all clingy on me. No, no. Forget about the clingy part. Didn't you think that without a condom, she might get pregnant? And then if she got pregnant, she might say, I'm keeping the kid? I didn't think of it that way. Why didn't you think of it that way? Because you're stupid. True. Because that's exactly the way it is. Right? Right. Uh-huh. So now, you, what advice exactly do you want? Like, if there's a way to, like, talk her into it, talk her into getting to an abortion, or... You just told me she's a Jesus freak. Yeah, but you're slick. Oh, you know I'm what you're slick. About. Oh, now you think I know what I'm talking about. Did I know what I was talking about when I said, always use a condom? Did I know what I was talking about? You did. Did you do what I said? I didn't. Uh, did I know what I was talking about when I said don't have sex with a girl and tell her you love her? True. Did Did you do that? No, I didn't. Is she a virgin? No, she wasn't. Oh, who else is she having sex with there, uh, the, this Jesus freak? Uh, nobody. Right. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. You just said she's not She's she's not a virgin. Oh, well, not for like, oh, like two years. Two years? Oh, she 15 when she was sexually active? Uh, what, what church is this? I don't know what church she goes to. Yeah. Very nice. And now you've told you love her. How did she react? She loves you and you love her? Is that what you told her? 
No, she said it, and then I was just like, oh, I love you too. Oh, boy. Well, your only chance, and it's remote, which is why it's called the Hail Mary. Don't you know about the Hail Mary? You've been a listener. No. Well, you don't pay attention, do you? No, because I listen to it when I drive, so I, I, I kind of tune in and out. Uh-huh. Maybe you should have stayed tuned in. Right? Right. Because we've talked about this very situation on the air. Your only hope, and it's remote and it may not work, and it's called a Hail Mary, and what it is is you uh, tell her how much you love her. Now you have to lay it on thick. And that uh, you want to be with her. But that uh, right now, financially, you're not ready to have a child. And, of course, the two of you are going to be together forever and ever. And one day there'll be a house with a white picket fence. And one day you'll have money put away to paint that nursery pink or blue and put baby furniture in there and have it be appropriate and be able to clothe and feed that child properly. And you'll have a college. You are going to college, aren't you? Um, not yet. I'm in school. Not? How old are you? I'm 18. You're going to high school. And so you're finishing, what, this month? Yeah, this is my last month. All right. And then what college are you attending? I'll be going to Cal State Fullerton. Did you ever worry about what uh, having a baby might do to your college uh, education? It, it's definitely changed the financial situation. Right. Because another thing I said when you weren't listening recently was, I said, I hope you guys keep knocking up your girlfriends because I'm going to need somebody to do that 1995 all change for me. I said I'm going to need somebody to mow my lawn and trim my hedges for $8 an hour. And if you guys keep knocking up your girlfriends, there'll be plenty of cheap labor to go around. I hope you're going to keep going. I, don't know. I hope to make something of myself someday. I really? Can. Is that why you're having sex with Jesus freaks without a condom? Because you want to make something of yourself? Not exactly. Mm. So how did this fit into your uh, career goals and your educational goals, having sex with a devout Catholic without a condom. How did that fit into the plan? It wasn't really in the plan. I see. It just sort of happened. No, no. You made it happen. I kind of made it happen. No, you didn't kind of make it happen. You are 100% responsible for what you did. I did. Don't you start blaming it on her or it was an accident or it just happened to you like like you were standing there and then a tidal wave washed over you. That's not how it happened. You're the instigator. You did this. You yeah. you did this. I did. Now I just have to handle my situation. Well, and so you have to tell her that uh, one day uh, there will be marriage and there will be a house with a white picket fence. But you're planning on going to school. What are you studying to become? I want to be a cop. And you're going to school for that? Um, not yet. I want to get my bachelor's degree. In what? Criminology. Criminology. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is that uh, you're going to tell you're studying. Of course, cops don't get paid nearly enough. They don't get paid nearly, uh, you know, uh, to be compensated for all the risk they take and all the great things they do. It's a shame, but it's true that uh, Los Angeles has a very hard time finding police officers because it pays so lousy. You are aware of that. No. Yeah. And the most college graduates make a lot more than cops. You you do know that, right? Right. And then on this show, we're big supporters of the police and police officers. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if we want to have all the police we need, uh, we need to pay more just because they're not finding good cops. They need to pay more to get more cops in there. But you decided without doing any research on what it pays, you decided you're going to become a cop. Well, I have, like, family in law enforcement. What does that have to do with anything? I have family that, uh, you know, that uh, is alcoholic. I have family that uh, works in fast food establishments. Does that mean I should do that? No, but I just feel like I want to. Like, I want to follow in my family's footsteps. Why? Just because. Well, if I, I followed know. in my family's footsteps, I wouldn't be sitting here now. That's a good point. Right? Right. But uh, you'll be lucky to become a cop because chances are you're going to be the guy at Trader Joe's who says paper or plastic. The next time I go to the Home Depot and I need a screwdriver, there you'll be in the orange apron. 
That's not looking too good. That's you. Who do you think those guys are? Don't you ever wonder when you see those guys? Like, how about you go to a concert at, let's say, the Honda Center. You're calling from Orange County. Let's say you go to the Honda Center, and there's that guy in the orange jacket stay there going, waving his arm, waving you and pointing you to a parking space or at Anaheim Stadium. Angel Stadium, now they call it. Um, right? You ever see that guy? Yeah. Do you think he went to college for that? No. Yeah, do you think he studied for that? No. Why do you think he ended up uh, with a job like that? It could be a number of reasons. No, no, the, the likely reason is he knocked up his girlfriend and then couldn't go to school. It's possible. Right. Probably another person who didn't have time to get condoms. You see, any time I think I might be forgetting the rules, I look at guys like that. I go to a concert, and there's that big guy wearing the yellow Staff Pro jacket. And I think to myself, if that guy hadn't smoked so much weed in high school, he wouldn't be standing here today. Right? Right. Yeah. So what you're going to have to do is try to convince her that uh, you plan to marry her and you plan to uh, uh, be with her for the rest of your life and that going to school is part of that and making a good living is part of that and that if you have to stop down and take care of a kid, it's going to ruin the chances for the career that's going to make the life the two of you will have together forever and ever as wonderful as it could possibly be. And um, you have to hope that she buys that argument and has the abortion. And then once she has the abortion, you have to dump her like a bad habit. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a really good idea. I'm going to follow this one. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, uh, I just I just want to say one thing to you, okay? Okay. When you're done checking the brake fluid, could you check my wiper fluid as well? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today because years ago I thought you were the key to Satan and, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Are you one of those people who says, I love you, like right out of the gates? Have you ever been a victim of that? Mike, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. Fantastic. Yeah, I was, uh, I've been seeing this girl off and on for uh, a couple years now, and uh, she, uh, not too long ago, she busted out uh, the I love you just out of nowhere. I just uh, was kind of, uh, I lost words. I wasn't quite sure how to respond from that. Kind of hoping you could... Uh, <laughs> Uh, by 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 running in the other direction, <laughs> just uh, just cut it off completely and quit. Right, quick. that's it. Done. You're not you're not going to get around there. All right, Tom. Just want. I mean, just think thing, think about. Right. Let's play out the conversation for a second. All right. She says, "I love you," and then you say, "Well, you know what? Uh, I just consider you kind of a friend with benefits. So could we just keep having sex?" What do you yeah. think the result of that is going to be? That's not going to end well. Right. So the best thing you can do is save your dignity and run for the hills. That's a good point. I mean, uh, dude, do you have any game? Yeah, I got game. Then then you should be able to get more chicks. Well, that's not the... I wasn't worried about that. I was just curious, like, uh, just if there was any way of going about... Why bother? You, there's other chicks out there. Why do you need to be with one chick? Don't. That's my point. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Good luck. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. J.D. on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tommy Boy. Hello, J.D. How you doing, Father? Doing great. I just had to let you know that... uh... I was I wasn't very smart. I'm 21 years old. Started going with this chick for about eight months. Uh, made the biggest mistake of my life and moved in with her. Uh, a couple weeks into it, she tells me that she might be pregnant. She's a little late. Um, 
of course, me telling her, I, I, I don't. She has my life in her hands, basically, Tom. She has my life. You know, she has my career. She has my. But you let that happen. You opened the vault by having sex with her without a condom, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, I, so I, whose fault so. is it? Whose fault is it? It's my fault. Right. It's my fault. But uh, once uh, once the scare went away and, and it turned out she wasn't pregnant, Tom, because she was planning on having the baby and without without any consent, without any without any question at all. And I figured that uh, I can't just let a girl like that be in my life. So I DT beat her and I'm moving on. Now, are you going to start using condoms or what? Yes, I am. Why weren't you using condoms before? I, I was an idiot and uh, thought birth control was the answer to everything. What do you mean you thought birth control was the answer to air everything? I thought that that would, that would protect me 100%. You mean the birth control pill? The pill. Yeah, well, yeah. why would you believe someone when they say they're on the pill? Uh, I mean, I, I physically saw her saw her take the pill. Not, 20, not 21 days a month you didn't. That's true. You didn't live with her, did you? Yes, I did. I made that mistake. Oh, Jesus. What are you doing? Not thinking, Tom. But uh, How long I, have you been a listener here? About a year and a half. So you knew better. I did. But you did. did it anyway because you thought you knew more than I did, didn't you? Wasn't very smart, Tom, but, I'm, I mean, I'm going to school now. I've only got about a year left. I'm majoring in uh, business management, and uh, I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to listen to you from now on. It's about time. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Luis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing, man? Great. Uh, I am calling you because I'm kind of desperate right now. You're the only person that can truly help me. I've been listening to your program for the last two years, and I, I haven't tried to follow it, but I got in a relationship because I thought I had control over it, and now... I recently broke up with my girlfriend uh, because I know it's not a good relationship. It's not going to take me anywhere. I'm not getting anything out of it. She is she's the kind of girl you don't want to be with, but I've been with her for quite some time, and right now I'm feeling like like I miss her a lot. It, and, and it's but You just said it. She's no good for you. Exactly, exactly. I, I, so I stop mean, being I a pussy. It. Then stop being a pussy. All right, but uh, no, I get that. These are set them down. Do you hate? Do you hate it. yourself? Let me ask you a question. Do you hate yourself? I, I wouldn't say I hate myself. I'm probably not very happy with myself. No, right no, now. you hate yourself, and the reason you hate yourself is because you want to do something uh, bad for yourself. I see something self-destructive. So you must hate yourself. I, I, well, I wouldn't say that. It's probably I feel like. Well, if you love yourself, then don't do bad things to yourself. All right, all right. I see, I see that. It just otherwise you hate yourself. I, I, um, if you want to put it that way, you I just told me that she would be bad for you. You said that. Yeah. Right. No, definitely. Yeah. So is that true or not? It is. I I think it is true. Yes. All right. Definitely, so yes. if you want somebody to do bad things to you, what does that say about you? I am. Uh, I hate myself, I guess. Right. Damn. So you need to not be self-destructive and not be getting with people who are bad for you. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, know, I know that much, but how, how do I go from that? I mean, cause, I, cause how, how do you uh, go from there? Don't you have a life? Do you have a job? Uh, no? I, yes, I, 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 started, I barely started working, and I'm going to school right now. What school are you going to? I'm going to a community college. And uh, what have you been doing the last uh, six years? The last six years? Falling in love uh, with people? Uh, I don't know, just, just working and, and going to school and try to get... How, ma how many years does it take to go to two years of community college? You graduate high school at 18. Unless you didn't do that either. No, I didn't do it. Right, so you were smoking weed and partying in high school and banging various chicks... Right? Not really, not, well, not really. My, my, what were you busy doing that you couldn't graduate high school at 18 like the rest of us? Well, I was, what, what was keeping busy? It, it's kind of complicated because I am... Let's I'm boil it down to the simplest terms here. Well, I'm, well, okay, here's the thing. I'm not from this country. I came probably five years ago, 
and uh, it took me a while to catch up with the, with the language and 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 uh, okay. And everything so you but you have been going to school all that time. Uh, yeah. No, uh, you haven't, have you? Well, I know. Not, by the way, I live in Los Angeles. I know many people like you who've come from other countries. Yeah. And who came here and had to master the language. Uh huh. And who have succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. Uh -huh. They worked a lot harder than you're working. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to argue with that. I, I know I, I, I'm not doing all the stuff that I that I could be doing to better myself. Well, so it, you want to know how to go on? Work harder. All right. Yeah. yeah Work that's, harder. That totally makes sense. And and, and you know what? I've, I I I pretty much know this thing, but it's just it's just hard. You know. I know. I know. I've kind of know what you're going to say about What are you, a little girl? Work harder. The reason you're busy falling in love with people is because you're, you, you, you're not busy enough. You're not get out getting your degree. You're not working on your career. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's, that's true. That's what you need to be doing. All right. So you say basically, you know, put more time into stuff that really matters, right? That's right. And stop falling in love with people. All right, Tom. I hear you, man. It's just, it's just, it's just hard, you know. I, I. I it's I, not hard. What do you want to be when you grow up, Luis? Well, I am a semi-professional photographer. I've been working on that for quite some time. What does and, that uh, mean? You only get paid every other shot? Yeah, I do shootings every once in a while. That's not what I said. Yeah. What does that mean, semi-professional? Well, I, I, I'm really not. I do it for the for the love of art. I'm, I, I think I'm. So you're an I'm, amateur. No, no, I'm thinking I'm actually pretty good. I've been working. Who's paying you to to take photos? I work for a couple of companies, and I work for a couple of uh, porn actresses. You work for porn actresses. That's quite the yeah. career. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah, I, I've been wanting to get into it, but it's just I'm not good with the networking. I'm not good at it. You 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 want to get more work in the pornography industry and you don't know how to meet people? Yeah, I guess you can say that. Do you really think that's a career? I wouldn't. No, it's not a career, but I mean it pays. <laughs> how much? Right. Now I have to ask. How much do you make? How much do I make per month? Per year, pick one. Uh, I would say month. Uh. 700, 800. A month? Yeah. You make less than $10,000 a year? Uh-huh. You'll be up to the poverty line if you double your income. Wow, well, yeah. You think that's good? No, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not do you have a green card? I do not have a green card. All right. Now we're getting down to the crux here. Yeah. You are You are an illegal alien, correct? Yes, sir, I am. All right. You could have, yeah, you're anonymous. You could have told me that. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what it is. All it's right. Just, it's just kind of hard. That's I the really hard. By the way, that's a lot harder than falling out of love with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So the, the mixture of both things is just really not helping that much, you know, because I really struggle to, to, to do the right thing because, you know, the system just makes it harder for you. And uh, there's plenty of people out there that, you know, okay, we don't need these people around here, this and that. But, I mean, not, I wouldn't say all of us are, are, are bad. I mean, all I want is, you know, to work and they have a regular life. I mean, it's not. And I, on that, we agree. I agree with you. I understand where you're coming from. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, you're just going to, you know, if you have an opportunity to go to community college, and you have an opportunity to go to a real college after that, you need to make full use of these resources. Yeah. Because you need money. Yeah. The only way you're going to get it is with the best possible education. I, I implore you. I encourage you. Stop falling in love with chicks. Fall in love with a career, please. The Tom Likas Show.